Catch fam, what is going on YouTube? This is Steven checking in here. ESPN just dropped their power rankings, 1 through 32, all NFL teams. And in this video, we're just going to do a breakdown of the top 5 to 10 teams on their power rankings. Um, but with that said too, I just did also want to note that uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars were ranked at number 32. And to be honest, that's not a huge surprise because they got beat by what everybody thought was going to be the worst team, which was the Houston Texans, right? So the Jacksonville Jaguars, along with Trevor Lawrence, really disappointing. I think we were all expecting a little bit more fireworks from this offense led by Urban Meyer and Trevor Lawrence. Um, but with that said, getting into the top 10, we'll start off at number 10. Baltimore Ravens still in the top 10 despite getting beat in that crazy Monday night finish. Uh, John dropped a video kind of breaking down that game, all the wild things that happened in it. But, man, the Ravens looked sloppy. Mark Andrews, uh, who was on my fantasy football team, he got uh, a very close to just like a very insignificant performance. I did not see a ton of potential out of him. But um, as ESPN highlights here, Dafe Awe from Penn State, he balled out at Penn State and he came over to the Ravens and he looked good too. He got a sack on Derek Carr. He looked explosive. To be honest, my first commentary based off of this is I'm not too sure the Ravens really proved that they should be in the top 10 still, but I understand it. They've got great winning pedigree and Lamar Jackson at the helm. New Orleans Saints here, ranked number nine, despite putting an absolute ass whooping on the Green Bay Packers in week one, 38 to three. Um, honestly, the biggest takeaway out of that game was Jameis Winston and how well uh, he performed. And I mean, honestly, five touchdowns, zero picks. I mean, that's that's pretty outstanding. But um, they made Aaron Rodgers look really foolish. And I think, you know, putting them at nine is maybe a little low. Um, because, you know, while I think that is a throwaway game, the Saints proved that they should be uh, taken very seriously. Um, and with that said, too, I mean, the Saints played great on defense, but the Pittsburgh Steelers showed that, you know, this defense as as legit as they were in 2020. Um, they came out there. They got a touchdown off that uh, blocked punt. Uh, they look good. They look just as impactful. Bringing over Melvin Ingram, who was on the Chargers before. I think that was a great free agent acquisition. Me and John talked about him in the offseason, but immediate impact, right? Came in, got a sack on, on uh, Josh Allen. He looked explosive as hell, but... Hey, TJ Watt, you know, leading that defense. I mean, he may have got an absolute bag. The Steelers had to throw up some cash for him. But you know what? When Ben Roethlisberger is looking as sloppy as he does on offense, you need guys like TJ Watt and Melvin Ingram to bring in some Ws. I think my biggest takeaway from the Steelers, though, was that the Steelers uh, really looked – very similar to last year. I'm not too excited about this team going forward because that offense still looks very inconsistent with Ben Roethlisberger at the helm, but that defense is going to be scary for teams week to week. The 49ers, yeah, I mean, ranked at seven. This is my Super Bowl team in terms of to represent the NFC. It looks a little shaky after how good uh, Tampa Bay performed too, but um, the 49ers, you know, they let in the Detroit Lions. They let them back in the game, um, but they look good, you know. We uh, now know the news uh, that broke today on the 14th of September that Raheem Mostert's going to be out for the rest of the season. So I look to see Trey Sermon getting a little bit more of a workload, Um but I do also think that there's a major carry away from that game that Jimmy Garoppolo really took the took the starting job by the reins and he had an absolute great performance. Um, and I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be around for a while because they've got a pretty soft schedule to start the season out to um, Cleveland Browns, you know. They lost in an absolute depressing fashion. Baker Mayfield just could not do it at the end of the game. Kind of choked, to be honest, which is sad because in my waiver wire pickups, I talk about how Baker Mayfield would have been a good start for week two going up against the Houston Texans. And I'm not totally against that. I mean, especially if you're in a deeper league, you know, 12 team plus, but um, Baker Mayfield needs to really start strapping on his helmet and playing better when it comes to playing against these top quarterbacks like Mahomes, because that is what is going to make them make it to the Super Bowl. That running game is going to carry you all the way, but you need an elite quarterback to win the Super Bowl at the end of the day. Buffalo Bills still at number five, despite kind of getting their ass beat physically by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I I would say that I was more impressed with the Cleveland Browns than the Buffalo Bills, um, despite the fact that I do think the Steelers are a pretty good team and a top 10 type of team for sure. Uh, I think the Browns 
played a way harder opponent and they showed out a lot better as well. So I would definitely flip-flop these rankings. And I thought the Bills offense looked very sketchy outside of Stephon Diggs. Josh Allen didn't look like he was the guy who deserved the bag, but I'm not going to be too critical on him. I mean, a very hard matchup, um, but that running game, I do think, you know, Zach Moss was a healthy scratch in that game, but you know, if they're relying on Devin Singletary alone or even Zach Moss as well, I think this running game is going to be a real handicap on the future of this Bills team going forward and trying to make a Super Bowl run. Los Angeles Rams at four. So that's, I think that's very, I mean, it's hard to say it's very low, but I do think this is a better team than ranking fourth. Definitely, I'm going to cheat ahead here and go at the number three spot with Seattle. Two division teams. You know, we've said it all offseason, John and I, that this this NFC West division is loaded, man. A ton of really good teams in this division. And I, I think the Rams are better than the Seahawks. I mean, the Seahawks, they beat the Colts. Um, I think they were pretty good in control the, the whole game there. But um, I do think the Colts gave them a little bit more of a fight than I was expecting. Um, and I think that outside of those two plays where Tyler Lockett just got behind the secondary and behind those safeties, I think this game could have been completely different, um, take away those two plays. So I was a lot more impressed with the absolute ass whooping that the Rams put on the Bears. I mean, guys, Matt Stafford looked really good. He looked like Every single penny, every single draft pick that the Rams uh, traded away and Jared Goff to trade him away as well to get Matt Stafford in the building was the right move. I think the Los Angeles Rams really positioned themselves nicely for a Super Bowl run here. And at first I was a little critical about Henderson and, you know, how I thought his performance looked. I mean, under 100 yards, but um, the Bears front is nothing to sneeze at for sure. And I think when me and John kind of broke down some of the fantasy, uh, you know, performances at a week one, we, we kind of settled on the fact that, you know, Henderson actually did show that he can do it right. And he can be just enough to ease the defense back to soften that uh, front seven a little bit so that Matt Stafford can see a little bit more open lanes too. Right. So uh, I, I do think Henderson as well as Sony Michelle is going to be just enough for Matt Stafford to slice and dice these defenses going throughout the rest of the year. And I like the Rams to be my number three team in the NFL coming out of week one, whereas, you know, you can't take a ton out of week one guys, but I do think the Rams and the next two teams that we're going to discuss here, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Kansas city chiefs really did prove to be the best teams in the NFL. So ESPN came out and said that uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are the first, the best team in the NFL coming out of week one and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers falling right behind them at number two. Um, to be honest, I would disagree with that. And I would say that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were the best team out of week one. I thought, you know, going up against Dallas Cowboys was a really hard opponent. Dallas looked really good. And I don't think people are really baking that into, um, you know, the fact that Tom Brady sliced this defense up the way he did. I think they're just saying, oh, yeah, the Cowboys are the old Cowboys with a terrible defense and the offense is, you know, lackadaisical. No, that's not the case, guys. I think the Cowboys are going to push for the a division title and are going to be scary in the playoffs as well. So I think the the way the Buccaneers handled that game was really respectable. Um, and I think that Tom Brady and the way the Buccaneers handled the Chiefs in the Super Bowl should definitely carry some weight into this season as well. Um, I, I don't think just because of Patrick Mahomes, we should automatically make the Kansas City Chiefs the best team in the in the league here. I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs, where they played tremendous, right? I'm not going to say that they played bad by any means, but I think they also didn't really improve on things that I was hoping they were going to, right? I thought that they were going to really start making this run game a little bit more of a focus. I thought Clyde Edwards and Lair would see a little bit more of an impact on the field. Uh, Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey are still the central focus of this offense, right? Which is a great thing in most cases, but at the end of the day, they were trailing basically three-fourths of the game, right? It, it only came down to Baker Mayfield throwing that pick at the end. Um, outside of that, I, I think that they could have lost this game and who knows at that point. Right. So I think Tampa Bay was in a lot of control, even though they won at the end of the game, I think Tampa Bay kind of had the foot on the pedal for most of that game. 
Just going through and taking a quick look at the rest of these projections here to make a couple quick notes on some of these other teams. So, you know, you've got Arizona behind Green Bay, which I don't think is quite fair because Arizona looked like maybe one of the most complete teams out of the NFL, um, led by Chandler Jones getting that five sacks, which was a, a franchise record. Um, so that was really impressive what he did. And he's making a serious argument to be paid the money he deserves as an elite edge rusher. Um, the Chargers, you know, barely squeaking by the Washington football team, but I think that was a harder matchup. Um, and I do think the Chargers are going to break into that top 10 ranking when all said and done come midseason. Um, Indianapolis Colts, you know, we lost that one. It was a it was a hard matchup, but I was excited about Quiddy Pay. I was excited about, you know, Buckner. I was excited about Wentz. And I thought Zach Pascal and Carson Wentz's uh, chemistry was really, um, really exciting as well, because I, I want to see Carson Wentz get uh, close with one of these receivers so that he has confidence to go to a guy when things break up in the in the pocket. <clears throat> the Tennessee Titans were kind of the biggest scary that came out of this week. I mean, we were all really pumped about Derrick Henry, Julio Jones, and AJ Brown. And Julio Jones was really a non-factor. I was a little scared about that. But also this cornerback right here, Elijah Molden, he got kind of cooked by about any receiver that was on him. Christian Kirk made him look foolish multiple times, right, guys? So uh, definitely not something that I see bleeding into the rest of the season. I think it was just kind of a, a week to toss up. I think the Cardinals were the better team, but uh, I expected a lot more out of this Tennessee Titans offense and hope it changes going forward. Um, and then... <clears throat> you know, kind of going through the rest of these, we're starting to see kind of, I think what we would uh, expect. I think the Falcons maybe should be even lower how badly they played, but, you know, being paired up with the giants and the bears there from 26 to 28, um, you know, it, it makes sense. Uh, I do really hope the Falcons turn it around though, because I know, I know a lot of people out there spent some high draft fantasy capital on Kyle Pitts and Calvin Ridley shoot, even Mike Davis too. There were some Mike Davis believers out there as well. So I'd really hope that doesn't just go to waste because that offense looked like they were, you know, just stuck in the mud the entire game. Um, and, uh, you know, with that said, I mean, that's really a wrap of the top 32. Just really a video to break down kind of week one at a whole and how ESPN sees the power rankings. Obviously, there's tons of power rankings out there, but I thought this was a really good basis to just kind of see what the uh, general population kind of thinks about how week one turned out. Um, but, you know, with that said, guys, we're going to be dropping a lot of waiver wire videos. Well, we've already dropped a waiver wire video, but we're going to have must starts um, from each position uh, throughout this week leading up to Thursday night's Washington football Giants game, uh, which should be a good one, too. Always a good division uh, rivalry for sure. But, um, you know, we are also on the road to 200 subscribers, guys. So we really appreciate that, you know, slamming that subscribe button, hitting that like button. You know, hopefully, uh, the, you know, the longer you follow us, you might see my team. Team, my fantasy football team turn it around and maybe get the chance to get a revenge tour against John. But, uh, you know, we just really, we really do appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us and uh, we hope you appreciated this video too. With that said, guys, you heard it here first at the catch.